Hi, grade six. This is the math lesson for lesson 5-2A. Please look at page 201. You've got two gentlemen that are discussing a problem and they decide to make an organized list. The problem says, I wonder how many different ways a woodwind trio, a trio is a group of three instruments, can be made if either a bass clarinet or a bassoon fills the first position and either a clarinet, oboe, or flute fills the other two positions. So the gentleman on the right-hand side there suggests an organized list, and they do that, and they come up with a final answer of six different trios based on those ideas. Why was an organized list helpful? Well, you, it, you, you tend to have less of a possibility of forgetting one of the possibilities, so it, it's helpful in that way. Let's look at number four on the next page. Daniel is making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. His choices are creamy or crunchy peanut butter, white or wheat bread, and grape, apple, or strawberry jelly. How many different kinds of sandwiches do you think David, or Daniel rather, can make? Hmm, hmm, an unorganized list. Well, that's a lot of words to write over and over again, isn't it? So one of the things I would do if I were trying to solve this problem is I would create code letters or numbers to represent these big words so I don't have to keep writing these big words over and over again. What do I mean by that? Well, number four is about creamy or crunchy peanut butter, right? So for the sake of argument, I'm going to use C for creamy, but I'm going to use CR for crunchy. Ah, no, that's, that's too close because creamy has an R in it as well. I think I'll go, I think, hmm, hmm. I'm going to go CU for crunchy and CE for creamy. No, that's kind of weird. Uh, why don't I just go A and B? A is creamy, B is crunchy, okay? Now, what else do I know? We're talking about white bread or wheat bread, right? White or wheat bread. So, white or wheat bread, and in my mind, I'm thinking white bread is white and wheat bread is more brownish in color or tannish in color. So I'm going to use T for wheat, T for tan, T for wheat. Okay. And what else do I know? I've got grape, apple, or strawberry jelly. Grape, apple, and strawberry. Have I used any of those beginning letters of grape, apple, and strawberry? I don't think I have. Oh wait, I've got an A up here for creamy. So what if I go G for grape, P for apple, and S for strawberry? Am I using any letters twice? No, now I've got kind of a code system where I know I'm not gonna repeat myself over and over again. Okay, how many different types of sandwiches can he make? How am I gonna do this? Well, let's start with A. How many different ways can I have creamy peanut butter? I can go creamy peanut butter with white bread and creamy peanut butter with wheat bread, right? But I've got all these choices of jams, don't I? Yeah. So maybe I can go creamy white grape, creamy white apple, creamy white strawberry. But then I can also go creamy wheat grape, creamy wheat apple, and creamy wheat strawberry. Hmm. So I've got three different types with the wheat white bread and three different types with the wheat bread. Do you think there's any other way I can do this with creamy peanut butter? Creamy peanut butter. I went creamy, white, and then all three flavors. Then creamy, wheat, and all three flavors. I think that's it. So what now? Now I gotta go with crunchy peanut butter. You know what? I bet it's gonna be exactly the same with crunchy peanut butter, just bees out in front. I can go crunchy with white and the three flavors. 
crunchy, white, and the three flavors of grape, apple, and strawberry. Crunchy, white, crunchy, white. Huh. And then I can go crunchy with the wheat bread. And I'm going to do that three different times because there's three flavors. Huh. So how many different sandwiches is that? Okay. Boy, I think I gave you way too much help on number four. Is there another way to do that? Later on in the year, you'll learn about something called the fundamental counting principle. What does that mean? Well, there were two different kinds of peanut butter. There were two different kinds of crust. And there were three different kinds of flavors. And because of that, I can multiply together the two different kinds of peanut butter, the two different kinds of crust, and the three different kinds of peanut butter. And that tells me as well that there are 12 different ways. Let's go to number four on the game board. You plan to move two spaces away from square A. You can either move horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. How many different moves can you make from square A? And you're supposed to list them. Okay. Let's draw a picture of that so we can visualize it a little bit better. Boink, 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 boink. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. So, did I do it right? Hopefully I did. Yep. We're starting at A, and we can make two moves. Two moves. So where can I go from A? I can go A, B, C. That's two moves. Where else could I go if I went to B first? I can go A, B, C, which I already did. Where else could I go except A, B? Couldn't I also go A, B, F, because that's right here, A, B, F, diagonally, and A, B, E. And could I also go A, B, D? Now here's a question. Can I go A, B, and then back to A again? Am I allowed to do that? What do you think? Look at the rules. Am I allowed to go A, B, A? The rules don't specifically say. But I'm going to tell you, don't do it. Don't go back to A. OK, so that's four ways of doing this. But you don't have to just go through B, right? You could go through E. You could throw through D. And, and so you got to finish this whole thing. And I'm going to give you a clue on this one. I'm going to tell you that the amount of answers you're going to find is somewhere between 14 and 18. I'm not going to tell you which number it is, but the amount of ways is somewhere between 14 and 18. And, and you need to list all of them. If there's 14 ways, you list 14 ways. If there's 15, you list 15, and so on. But I'm telling you, there's at least 14, uh, and there might be as many as 18. It's somewhere in between 14 and 18. Let's go on to number six. The graph below shows deposits and withdrawals. During which week was the difference between the deposits the greatest? The difference between the deposits and the withdrawals the greatest? Well, look at week number one. Look above where it says week number one. The blue bar is money that is put into the bank, and that blue bar says 250. The red bar, that's money taken out of the bank, that's negative 150. They're asking about the difference in week one. The difference in week one. Look up here. Let me show you how that's done. The blue bar goes up to 250, and the red bar goes down to negative 150. All right? They want to know the difference between those two numbers. Difference means a subtraction problem. So I'm going to take 250 and subtract from it the negative 150. Subtracting a negative is really adding the opposite of the second number, and that gives me a total of 400. So week one has a difference of 400.
What you need to do is figure out all the differences for week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, and decide which difference is the biggest amount. And then name that week. Okay. Let's go on to number seven. Miss Cassidy has taken a picture with first, second, and third place winners of the science fair. If Miss Cassidy always stands on the far left, how many different ways can the students arrange themselves for the picture? Hmm. So there's going to be a total of four people in the picture, right? Miss Cassidy is going to be right here. I'm going to call her Miss C. Actually, it's Mrs. C, isn't it? Excuse me. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm sorry for mislabeling you. And so we can put first, second, and third just like that. But is that the only way to arrange them? No. We don't need to worry about this slot over here because that's always going to be Miss Cassidy. What, what if we went one, three, two? And, and how many other ways are there? We've come up with two ways so far. Two ways. There, there's got to be more. What if you put the second place person right here? How many ways would there be? And finally, what if you put the third place person right there? How many spots would there be? Count them up. Figure out how many different ways there are. Number eight. Members of the student council are raising money to attend a conference. The total costs of the conference are shown in the table. If 24 students are attending the conference, how much does each student have to raise? 24 students. Hmm, 24 students. How are you going to figure that out? Well, hopefully you recognize that maybe the first thing you need to do is take those numbers that are in the table and add them up. I got 1,200, 288, and 360. And, and once you add them up, that's going to be your total cost of the entire trip. And the total cost of the entire trip needs to be divided up amongst the 24 people that are going. So it's kind of a two-step problem. First add these numbers, then divide by the 24 people that are going. And if you do that, you're going to find the cost per person. I will give you a clue. The answer is somewhere between $70 and $80. $70 and $80. Somewhere between $70 and $80. Let's look at number nine. Find two consecutive odd numbers that when you add them together equal 56. But when you multiply them together, it equals 783. problem says when you add them together you get the number 56 and when you multiply them together the same two numbers you get 783 you know for me I'm gonna try guessing and checking let's see what happens now they have to be consecutive odd numbers like 1 and then 3 or five and then seven, consecutive odd numbers. So just for the fun of it, let's try one and three. One plus three is four, that's not even close. One times three is three, that's not even close. One and three don't work at all. Uh, let's pick some higher or larger consecutive numbers. How about 10 and 11, 10 and 11? Does that work? 10 plus 11 is 21, still not even close. 10 times 11 is 110. That's not close either. Oh, by the way, I made a mistake. Those aren't consecutive odd numbers, are they? They're not even, this one's not an odd number. This one is, but not this one. So that was another lousy choice. How about, how about 21 and 23? 21 and 23. Are those consecutive odd numbers? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. What's 21 plus 23? That's only 46, right? And we're still not close. It's got to be numbers that are bigger than 21 and 23, because that doesn't work. How about 31 and 33? Let's try those two numbers. Will that work? Well, 
31 plus 33 is 64. Uh-oh, that's too high. And 31 times 33 is somewhere above 900. I don't know exactly what it is, but just for the fun of it, let's figure that out. I get uh, 1,023. So, 1,023, which is way too high, and 64 is too high. So what does that tell us? It tells us that our two numbers are bigger than 21 and 23, but they also are smaller than 31 and 33. Hopefully that helps you to think through number 9. Okay, we're on to number 10. Therese took a bag of cookies to play rehearsal. Half of them were given to the musicians and five of them to the director. And Therese was left with 15 cookies. How many cookies did he take to the rehearsal? Hmm, to me that sounds like one of those working backwards problems, doesn't it? So he goes to the play and he's got this. Uh, this is going to be in my attempt at drawing a bag of cookies. Okay, there's my bag of cookies with a cute little ribbon tied around it with a string coming off of it. And we have an unknown amount of cookies inside, right? And when he gets there, what's the first thing that happens? Half of them are given to the musicians, half of them. And half means that they took the amount of cookies and they divided them into two parts, right? And then it says five were given to the director of the play. So that means they took another five out of the container gave them to the director, and then it says he had 15 cookies left over. So, can you work backwards to this number? Remember, when we work backwards, we're doing the opposite of subtracting 5, and then we're doing the opposite of dividing by 2. Hopefully that should help you. Um... I think I'm going to stop at that point.